So now what we're going to do is add in the nuclei. And don't worry, it shouldn't be too hard. One thing that we probably want to keep in mind is what cranial nerves do what. So, you know, you've got cranial nerve 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you've got 12 cranial nuclei. Uh, 12, like that. And you know the mnemonic, some say money matters, but my brother says big brains matter most. And that tells you which nuclear, uh, which cranial nerves do what. So some are motor only, some are sensory only, and some do both. And the reason why I'm going through this is it's quite important for you to know which ones do which. For example, uh, in terms of motor only, we've got number three, the oculomotor, number four, the trochlea, number six, the abducens, all of these do the eyes, uh, and you've got number 12, the hypoglossal, and also number 11, the spinal accessory. One easy way I tend to remember it is that these guys are all multiples of 12, 3, 4, 6, 12, and then you've also got 11. But these guys are the pure motors. Then you've got the sensories. 1, 2. 1 is olfactory, 2 is optic, and um, then you've got 8. Vestibular cochlear, which is hearing and balance. So these are all the sensory ones. And then what you've got left are the ones that do both. So 5, trigeminal. You've got uh, seven, which is facial. You've got nine, whoops, nine, glossopharyngeal, and then uh, ten. Who can forget vagus? Okay, so let's just check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Great. So that's all the twelve cranial nerves. And once you once you write that down on the side over there, it might be a bit easier to. Uh, keep track. So what I'm doing now is just drawing the sulcus limitans down and what we're going to do now is basically draw the nuclei in and this would be a I believe a coronal section. No, a sagittal section. No, sorry, just grab that. Coronal section. So we're basically cutting the brain midway and um, in half brainstem. So, you know, you've got the brainstem coming down and basically, okay. So what we've got here, this is the midline and you can see I've poorly drawn out part of the brainstem over here where this part is the midbrain, this part is the pons, this part's the medulla, and this part is the spinal cord. Okay, so um, once you're ready, we're going to start putting it in, and before you know it, we're, we will have all, gone through all the cranial nerve nuclei. Okay, so if you remember, over here on the motor side, you've got these guys, the general sensory as general somatic efferents, GSE, and they are, correspondingly, the motor-only nuclei. And luckily for us, they actually go in this particular order. So, now let's start drawing in. So grab your red pens, and from the midbrain, draw this over here, under the general somatic efferent, and you can label that the oculomotor nucleus. Oculomotor nucleus. Great. Then, following that, we have got, underneath here, still in the midbrain, the trochlear nucleus. And isn't it great that they're named after their respective cranial nerve? So, then, you have got number six, the abducens uh, cranial nerve, and it's going to the abducens nucleus. That's located in the pons. Then further going down, we've got 
the hypoglossal nucleus, which that was 6, this is 12. And then finally, we've also got spinal accessory nucleus. So this is the accessory nucleus. And notice that the spinal accessory nerve, apparently the nucleus is located in the spinal cord, but comes up into the, um, the brainstem. So that's one column, and that's one column done. So we've done these cranial nerves. Moving on, on to the next column. So general visceral efferent. Visceral efferent, meaning that they, uh, they supply internal organs, but mainly in this case, they would be actually also supp supplying parasympathetic, um, sim parasympathetic functions of the brainstem. So what we've got here is a nucleus for the third cranial nerve, um, ocular motor, and this is called the Edinger-Westphal nucleus. And then following that is the superior and inferior salivatory nuclei. So these guys are located here. So the superior salivatory and the inferior salivatory. And in the superior salivatory, seven goes there. It innervates all the um, all the salivary glands in the face, except for the parotid gland, whereas the inferior salivatory goes to the parotid gland and um, goes through cranial nerve number nine. And then, uh, finally, one last part from this would be this particular big nucleus called the dorsal motor nucleus of number 10. So 10 being the uh, vagal nerve. Yep. yep, so that's the general visceral efferent. And then now we move on to the, so, uh, the special visceral efferents. So these are the guys that innervate um, the muscles of the face, as well as other swallowing structures and other things. So, let's start off with the very first one, which would be the trigeminal nucleus, trigeminal motor nucleus, if you want to call it, trigeminal motor nucleus, that would be number five, cranial nerve number five, and then we go down into the facial nucleus. Facial nucleus number seven. And then you've also got the nucleus ambiguous. It's an ambiguous nucleus. And so it's nucleus ambiguous for number nine and number 10. So glossopharyngeal and vagal. And there you go. That's all the nuclei in the actual. Uh, the motor nuclei in half of the brain, uh, brainstem. So, moving on to the sensory, and we're actually almost there. So we start off, although first you notice that you've got general uh, visceral afferents as well as special visceral afferents, but what happens is that both of them combine pretty much into one single one. And so what you've got is this huge nucleus over here, coming down like that, and that's called the solitary nucleus. This receives information from uh, 7, 9, and 10. And what does the solitary nucleus do? So you've got the special visceral afferents such as we mentioned like taste before, as well as you've got visceral afferents such as, you know, um, uh, 
Sorry, I, I suddenly can't, can't think of it. I have to look that up again. But yeah, you've got taste, and also you've got other chemo, uh, chemo receptors that come up from, let's say, the, uh, the vagus nerve, um, such as from the heart, as well as baroreceptors as well. So all of these come into the solitary nucleus. And what you'll notice is that if you know with, yeah, I'm drawing out the tongue, from the tongue, the first two thirds of the taste come from cranial nerve number seven. And the anterior one third of the taste comes from cranial nerve number nine. And so that's where these nuclei come into, and that's where this new uh, taste sensation is processed. So you've got taste coming into here from seven and nine, and then also, for example, with the uh, barrel receptors of the heart, you've got the heart right here, you've got the aortic arch coming up like that, and you know that the aortic arch has aortic sinuses, which um, the vagus nerve receives information from to tell to, to tell whether if you know what what blood pressure you're at and then with your carotids when they split up like that you, over here you've got a carotid sinus where the cranial nerve number nine receives information to tell what type of uh, once again whether if your blood pressure is high or low so that's how they kind of work and all of these come up to the solitary nucleus and I find sometimes like understanding what each one does kind of makes it a bit more logical as to what uh, as to how to draw this whole thing up and so the taste stuff kind of goes on the top of the nucleus whereas these guys go on the bottom well sevens most predominantly on top and then you've also got nine ten on the bottom okay moving on to this one over here special somatic afferents and I've mentioned that special somatic afferent stuff are seeing with vision smelling with your nose as well as um, hearing, as well as you know, general balance. But so, vision is number two, nice safe, uh, and smelling is number one. These guys are number eight. And if you know where your cranial nerves come out of, number two and number one, they're nowhere near the brainstem, so they won't be here. Instead, what you're left with is cranial nerve number eight. And so let's draw that in. And the number eight nucleus would be located over here. So that's the vestibular, uh, I think it's a vestibular cochlear nucleus. And that's located over here. And then finally, what we've got is the general somatic afferents, the guys who receive the primary sen sensory um, information. So. What I'm going to get you to do is draw something like this, a circle, a little thing coming up the top, and a huge thing coming down the bottom like this. Probably a bit neater, but yeah, certainly draw that. And so what you've got is this whole thing called a, um, I think it's called the trigeminal nucleus. So they say the trigeminal nerve has four nuclei. We've drawn one here, one, and then two, three, and a four. This part is called the mesocephalic nuclei. And why is it called mesocephalic? Because the mesencephalon is, the, is also known as the midbrain. And if you look, the mesocephalic nuclei is in the midbrain. Um, it mainly does proprioception, meaning that it kind of tells your face and where, like, you know, when you're chewing, it tells your face, like, you know, where your cheeks are, where your tongue is, so that when you bite, you don't kind of, kind of bite on yourself. So mesocephalic nuclei, sensory information. Then you've got this primary, or um, principal, I should say, the principal sensory nucleus of the trigeminal system which receives uh, sensations such as touch from the face. And then you've also got this whole segment over here, which is called the spinal, um, the spinal trigeminal nucleus. Spinal trigeminal nucleus. And what that does 
is that it's kind of like an extension of the dorsal horn from the spinal cord comes up and it receives information such as pain and temperature and all the other things you would expect to uh, receive from the spinal thalamic tract. So that's that and just to add a bit, uh, just one last bit of information. So since this is all a trigeminal nucleus, so it wouldn't be surprising that cranial nerve number five, the trigeminal nerve, fuses in here. But also, you get information from seven, nine, and ten. So five, seven, nine, and ten all go into uh, this particular region over here. And believe it or not, that is all the cranial nucleus. Um, probably just some closing comments. Uh, if you so, if you notice, the cranial nerves are kind of named after the numbering are named after the order they kind of pop out from the brainstem. So, what you're going to notice is that the numbers kind of go in a numerical order from small to large, going down. So, generally, it's three, four. You've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in this region, eleven and twelve. You'll notice that uh, eleven they used to think that it comes up above, but what they finally realized was that 11 kind of popped up, at, starts in the spinal cord and then comes up and then fuses and comes, goes back down. So other than that, generally you can, you can find the number going from small to large, and if you, you know, for example, say during the examinations and you're not too sure where the numbers, are, where each column goes, well, uh, where, where each nuclei goes in the respective column, it's always going to be from small to large on the going down. So yeah. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, send me send us some messages if you if anything is unclear. Thanks for watching.